the first thing we're going to do um, is two-line lettering. So two-line lettering was something I developed and I observed myself doing, and it's this idea. Um, I'm going to use the word pause. So you'll see what I do is I always start with single line lettering like this. And that's how all these start. In fact, both two line and three line <clears throat> begin the same way with single line lettering. Uh, and you know, this is maybe something you're already using. Um, and the idea then is to come back in, and of course I'm doing this very slowly because I'm teaching it. What you'll find is when you're doing sketch noting uh, and you need this, you can do it pretty quickly. So that's one of the big advantages. And then the other thing I mentioned was that you can come back and do it days, months, weeks, years later, if you like. So there's that benefit, right? So if you come back a month later and realize that you wanted to emphasize something, it's easy to add that emphasis. The other thing I like about this is, you know, in a, in a lot of senses, you're building your own template for the letters that you're producing. And the, and the even better benefit is nobody knows that you built the template. They just see the nice bold letter at the end. So what I'm going to show you is the process. So what I do is I take the pen and I just do a parallel line next to the single line that I've already done. So you can see that I'm starting to define where the edges are. So I'll go on the inside of the U. And I'm going to show you a trick with the S. So S's are really tricky generally because of the, all the complex curves happening. One way that I've solved this, I start on the inside above. And as I come to the middle, I actually cross over to the underside. So then you end up with roughly the same pattern on the top and the bottom. Now we'll deal with this oddity here later because it's too thin right now, but that's okay. And then finally on the E, I do the same thing, just add another line. So my next step then is to come in and cap it. And all the, all the while, I'm sort of observing my letter form, especially if I have time like this, to see where is it too thick? Where is it too thin? Are there any flaws I may need to fix? Um, as you practice this, you'll get better at it. Uh, so you'll see now we've got a template basically of how this bold letter will look. So now let's go in and fill it. So you'll see, once you start filling it, you start seeing what those letter forms are gonna look like in their more final state, right? So here I, I've got that, you can really see it's pronounced where this middle part's narrow, right? Okay, so my next step now is to sort of look at the whole thing and look at what are the what's going on, right? So first of all, we have to deal with this S. So the benefit of sort of flipping and uh, going underneath here is that these are equal and they feel equal. So now what you have to do is just come in and visually uh, smooth those out so they be, so the middle part becomes the same width, right? Then I look for like little white marks and if I, if I feel inspired, I might actually fill them in. If I look for any kind of oddities or, or weirdness that maybe is going on, right? One thing I like about this too is it produces a little bit of a human look and feel like it's not too perfect. Um, you'll notice that um, kerning wise, and this is all to do with practice and warming up, here the P and the A are tight. The U is probably ideally where I'd want it to be. The S is a little narrow, so I ended up with a little bit too much space on either side. If I wanted to be perfect, I really don't, I'm not really worried about that. A lot of that has to do with learning pacing and timing and just getting used to how it feels to do these letters. So um, just as a sample, I'm gonna do this quickly and just see what it looks like if I do it quickly. So I'll do the same one. So now I've practiced once, so I'm aware that my S, maybe I need to actually spell it right. <laughs> so I'm just gonna say pays, how about that, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna keep going. I'm just gonna do it really quickly and you'll see one interesting thing about this is, uh, how different it looks when you move quickly. And I think that can be an advantage. Like, so if you go in this way, you're, you maybe can map it out a little more tightly and produce like more really tight, almost typographic lettering. Here, my goal is to make it bold, but to have sort of an immediacy to it. So you can see uh, pretty clearly the, the, di the difference between the two. They're imperfect, there's little white marks. I kind of like those white marks. Now on this one, I might come in and just fill in the middle just to make it a little more equal. 
and then maybe I would clean up the bottoms, but not too much because I like that um, um, feel, look and feel to it. So that is the two line. 